Hi, I'm Sarah Clausen, Senior Product Manager for ETC, and in this video, we would like to introduce you to the new features of Hog 4 OS version 4.0. This version of Hog OS represents a leap forward for the Hog system, bringing a totally new color system and a lot of work under the hood that allows us to keep improving Hog into the future. If you've been using Hog, you know that color control was limited to two color spaces, CMY and HueSet and you pretty much had to choose which space you wanted to work in because there was no way to fade between CMY and HS colors. The benefits of the new color system include real color names all in the color kind, the ability to mix a color based on design intent with virtual functions, the ability to work in whatever color space you want whenever you want, the ability to copy colors from one fixture type to another regardless of their color mechanisms, and tinting tools to adjust colors seamlessly across fixture types. This release includes more than just the new color system. It also includes new expanded ranges, for example, in color correction functions, and new underlying math making the system more accurate and laying the foundation for future work. All the new color functions are available in the effects engine, and we've improved pixel mapping as well. It's important to know that because of these changes to the infrastructure of the system, this is a moment where existing show files will not be forward compatible. So when should you upgrade? You should upgrade when you find yourself starting a show from scratch, or when you decide it's time to do a good spring cleaning on your base show file. Alternately, you could image back and forth as needed, just be sure to back up your shows to external media in that case. Now here's Gabby, one of our product assurance specialists on the HOG team, to tell you all about the new features in detail. Let's start with the changes to fixtures. Patching has not changed, so let's get right to how color is displayed in the programmer. Today we are using one Lone Star, two Source 4 Luster X8 fixtures with eight emitters, two Color Source PARs with four emitters, and two generic RGB LEDs. Notice we have RGBA, Deep Red, Lime, Cyan, Indigo, and S-CMY. Functions with an S-dash prefix are subtractive. Meanwhile, those without a prefix are additive. This means that all color functions are now under the color kind. No more IRGB. You'll also notice in the programmer functions with a V-dash prefix. We'll talk about those later. All these functions are available in the effects engine. Moving on to the color picker. Version 4.0 has a totally new color picker that has four different tabs that allow you to manipulate your fixtures. Let's look at the physical tab. The physical tab shows the actual functions of the selected fixtures. You can work directly in this tab or you can use the encoders. As you add fixtures to your selection, their physical color functions appear here. We also have the SPD view which shows the spectral power distribution of the fixture. To adjust the emitters of the fixture you have selected, just click and drag. Now let's look at the virtual color tab. We call this virtual because it lets you use color spaces to adjust colors. When you pick a color in one of the four spaces, Hog will convert the color you pick into the values the fixtures need to create the color you've chosen. Let's start with the familiar color space, HSV. Notice this line? This is a gamut line. It represents the colors that the first fixture in the selection can make. If you want to ensure that every fixture can make the color you select, pick the fixture with the smallest gamut first. I'm going to next through the selection to show all the gamut lines of the fixtures we have. You may have noticed that the real fixtures we have here show some differences in how they get to the color you've picked. This is due to their having different color systems. One is additive and uses LEDs, the other is subtractive and uses physical motorized wheels and color flags to change colors. The color picker sets the target color. It does not set the path or adjust timing for smooth fades on its own. You can play with this using fixture timing if you want to affect how the fixtures get to the colors you pick here. We also have three more virtual spaces you can use. CMY, RGB, and XYY. 
Working in a virtual color space is great because it's an easy way to get all your fixtures, regardless of parameters or color mixing system, to achieve a target color. The color spaces act as a translator to each of the fixture types in your selection. This means when a color is selected in one of the pickers, each fixture gets special instructions on how to best achieve the color based on their physical parameters. One thing to note is that all color spaces are active at the same time. As I change colors in one picker, the other ones are also changing. You can also go between spaces whenever you want. The HSV and XYY color pickers can display a gel book overlay. Select your preferred manufacturer and dots representing gels will appear over the color picker. These are best viewed using a mouse hover. All of the virtual color spaces also allow for adjustment using the function sliders and direct entry. Feel free to use these if you'd like. The virtual functions controlled by the sliders are displayed in the programmer along with the physical functions of the fixture. Before we talk about the next tab, let's take a moment to look more closely at the CMY and RGB color spaces. These pickers use the large space to adjust two of the functions and the sidebar to adjust the third. One thing to understand about these two pickers is that like the others, they are creating a color target, not physical RGB or CMY values. This means that virtual cyan and subtractive cyan, like Lone Star, are not one-to-one. -one. To achieve virtual cyan, the yellow flag may be brought in to help achieve the target color. Same thing with additive fixtures. It is possible to adjust which color functions are affected by the virtual color pickers. That's what the lock button next to each function in the physical tab is for. Locking a function ensures that the value of that function will not change no matter what color you pick in the virtual color pickers. The locked function is still available for manual control though, so you can manipulate it via the encoders or physical function sliders. The function lock is a manual control function that applies to the current selection. Clearing the programmer will also lift the lock. Locks are not stored in programming, nor are they displayed in editors. Let's take a quick look at the gels tab. Here you find a number of gel manufacturers libraries. We also include a gel manufacturer called Standard Colors. We've placed a number of common and useful color mixes in here that don't specifically correspond to real gels, as well as a range of color temperatures. Lastly, we have the Tint tab. This tab provides a number of adjustment buttons in Designer Speak. For example, if you mix colors on a number of fixtures and then you want to desaturate them a bit, this tab lets you do that quickly. You can tap for small adjustments or hold for large ones. There are also other parameters like plus green and cooler. These are the new color tools in HOG 4 OS version 4.0. Next, we'll talk about what gets stored, change type, and how pixel mapping works. Let's talk about palettes. HOG 4 has three different palette types, global, per type, and per fixture. In global palettes, virtual color mixing values are stored so that the target color can be applied to any fixture type. In per type and per fixture palettes, the physical functions are stored. Cues and scenes also store the physical functions of the fixtures. One of the new benefits of the new color system is the ability to copy color from one fixture type to others. The system will copy over color as closely as possible given the possible differences in color mechanisms and gamut. This process passes through the virtual parameters and applies values to the physical parameters of the target fixtures. Change type is a function of HOG4 that allows you to replace one fixture type with another. The new color system uses virtual color mixing functions to translate the original fixture's color output to the new fixture's color mixing system. This may create changes in your show that you need to be aware of. For example, if you change an 8 emitter fixture to a 4 emitter fixture or vice versa, the additive color mixing values of the fixture will likely vary to try to achieve the original color. So what happens to your palettes, cues, and scenes when you change type? The only palettes that change are your per-type and per-fixture palettes. 
The per type palettes gain the new fixture type, while the per fixture palettes remove the old fixture types entirely and replace it with the new one. Each palette will match the previous fixture's color as closely as possible. Meanwhile, in your cues and scenes, the system has also done its best to match the color of the original fixture type. Let's talk about pixel mapping. Pixel mapping takes advantage of the new color system as well. There are no longer color space selection buttons at the top of the plot directory. Instead, there are two new options, pixel map intensity or pixel map color. If only pixel map intensity is toggled on, only the intensity functions of the fixtures in the plot will be controlled by the pixel map layer, even if color content is selected from the media picker. Fixture color is now independent of the content selected. By allowing only the intensity function of the fixtures to be controlled by the pixel map layer, color parameters can be manipulated on a per fixture basis, independent of the color of the content. If only pixel map color is toggled on, only the color functions of the fixtures in the plot will be controlled by the pixel map layer. This means that the intensity is independent of the media content being played, so fixtures must be set at an intensity to see the content. Pixel mapping color allows you to now do intensity chases and inhibit fixtures with group masters, something that could not be done previously. Lastly, we have one additional feature in this release to tell you about, record defaults. In previous versions, changing default values for fixtures had to be done in the edit fixtures window. While this is still possible, there's a new feature that allows you to record default values from the programmer. For example, if you would like a new default color or position, set that live, then press record fixture. Select the parameters you want to record to record defaults, and press OK. To restore defaults, go into Edit Fixtures and press Restore Defaults. So those are the major changes in this version. You can find the release notes and download version 4.0 at etcconnect.com.